Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. We're glad you can join us for a half an hour of fast-paced, highly intelligent, I guess that's all I can think of. But Levity. <laughs> Levity. Political chatter uh, for, from the chattering class here. Uh, we're glad you could join us. Uh, to my direct right is Ken Risto, who is the Curriculum and Assessment Specialist for Social Studies that's in the Sheboygan Area School District. As well as a, a, social, bon study, a social studies teacher, simple social <laughs> a studies simple teacher. Simple. Yes. A simple math professor, never, never. Uh, oh. Math is terribly difficult, <laughs> at least for me. Uh, Tom Paneski from the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan campus. Cal Potter, former state senator and library guy, and uh, so we're glad you could join us. <laughs> library, <and> guy. <laughs> library guy. <laughs> well, his title is even longer than It was Ken's a long one. And, I, I um, used to have eight bureaus under me, so I could. Well, there you go. It was eight bureau potter, they called him. <laughs> <laughs> How many buckets do you have, right? right. Um, we're, we're just in the thick of the political season. We're talking about some state races, and if we have time, we might even segue into some national issues. But um, uh, it is an interesting and odd political season, um, I think, uh, trying to figure out the impact. Um, let's just start with the Kagan Guard 8th Congressional District race uh, in the Green Bay area. Um, John Gard, now did John Gard resign from, forgive my ignorance, resign from the Wisconsin leg legislature to make this race? Well, he was, he would be or he was up for election. So he, he can't did, run for both. He did, okay, so this is a make or break election yeah. for him. Um, his uh, uh, Democratic opponent, Steve Kagan, as I understand it, is an allergist. Uh, and lots and lots of money being spent on this race. Some question as to whether the general unpopularity of the Republicans might be uh, giving guards some trouble. What do you guys think? Well, polls, what I'm hearing, it's a close race. Um, I think the high profile nature of the race uh, was indicative of why George Bush came flying in to help out uh, guard. And uh, it's one of those few seats that's up, toss up, that will determine who controls the House of Representatives on the national level. So we do have one of our important uh, races in the state uh, playing on a national level as to who controls the House. Yeah. I think it's the first time that I actually receive campaign literature and I'm not even, none of us are going to be voting in that election. Yeah. I, I, I get campaign mail from from the guard folks. I'm not quite sure how I ended up on that mailing list, but... <laughs> Tom um, signed you up. Oh, that's you're, right. you're now an honorary <laughs> member of the that's Republican always, that's Party. Yeah, that's always interesting. You're, not, you're a swing voter. Right? <laughs> well, I think it's because I have a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really ah, what it is. Ah, okay. you know. Putting on a few pretensions, eh? And, uh, teach you... the subject, <laughs> thought might be good to stay current. You know, what a rare thing that might be in the public schools. But... Um, but I mean, that just tells you how much resources are being brought to bear. And of course, you see all the national, I mean, both national parties, uh, campaign parties are throwing money in and, and, and making the ugly, the really ugly doom and gloom ads. Uh, pretty much guards running the, the Republican playbook. We're going to talk about, you know, um, illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about, talk about stem cell research, I believe. Maybe, maybe not. I know that's a state issue as well. Um, and uh, you know, John and Kagan's going to raise your taxes because that's what Democrats yeah. do. I mm -hmm. mean, it's going to be about taxes and immigration. And uh, I don't think they really have talked too much about the war on terror yet. Have there been ads about no, that? No, I don't recall. No, but um, it, <clears throat> as I understand it, uh, the Journal Sentinel um, article from uh, October first indicates that. John Gard offers a staunch defense of current U.S. policy in Iraq, and oh, sure. Kagan is um, is uh, uh, obviously taking the. Um, um, well, he's a Democrat, so what is his position going to be? Yeah. Well. I mean. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, mean, who knows with the Democrats? Uh, you know, exactly. And, uh, but it it is interesting, and uh, with my Irish sense of doom, I keep thinking that um, there's all this talk about the Democrats maybe solidly taking over the House and, you know, just maybe a whisper's breath of a chance that they could, you know, get the Senate back. And I just think the Democrats being the Democrats, and I'm one of them, they're going to screw it up somehow. <laughs> somehow, you what know. What the Democrats <laughs> lose? What happens then? But, well, yeah. I think... Well, you guys are still responsible then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and it's a heavy <laughs> burden, Tom, I'm telling you, and it's getting, it's getting heavier and heavier. But it is really here in Wisconsin, a, a reflection of uh, a referendum, if you will, on, on, on the Bush presidency. So it'll be, I think, very interesting to I see I think that's how what's making out. this race uh, competitive. Mm -hmm. um, people are very frustrated about what's happening in, in foreign policy on a number of fronts. And if you look at that district, the last time a Democrat held it, it was when Father Cornell held it. And then Toby Roth was in there for uh, a long time. Long time. Toby was pretty conservative. That's right. And so way. it's really been in Republican hands for a number of years. Who was that uh, radio announcer? Didn't he win for... And he's doing an ad for... Johnson. He was a television... Jay Johnson, Jay Johnson Jay ran but lost. It was yes. close, oh, he, though. He, he lost. Oh, yeah. I thought it was he close, won. But it, was oh, very, but it was a very, very competitive race, very much like this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I he lost. He oh, surprised he, lost. he did not get back into it. You know, that would be... Yeah, yeah I'm not quite sure why he that, didn't. Something that you would, okay. be, would be thinking of, but... And was Father Connell, was he one of the Norbertines from St. Norbert's? I'm wondering what his connection is because, I mean, you know, in the Green Bay community, well, he was. If you're a Norbertine, you walk on water. Well, he in the pier. Eventually, he was told he couldn't be in right. the political right. arena. Right. Yeah, that's so. That's okay. exactly was his demise. So I don't know what his order was, but uh, the Vatican equivalent of the Hatch Act. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, you know, in the you middle know. of this. Of the but he was a progressive post. Democrat, and yeah. he, uh -huh. it didn't fly very well yeah. with some people. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's, it's interesting. But um, going back to some state races, I am astonished still in the Doyle Green race that there have been really relatively few substantive issues that have defined this race. It's just a question of who's dirtier, who's gotten more money from dirty sources. Mark Green, we talked about this last time, whoever's running his campaign and is not willing to let go of that $467,000, which I think they could probably get from another source, is just keeping the, you know, who's dirtier than, than whom, uh, that whole piece alive. I mean, what are the issues? Nobody's talking issues. As close as you get is stem cell. Why isn't Mark Green holding up Jim Doyle and his, I mean, Doyle is, at least the last time I looked, was uh, anti-death penalty. Um, that may be an issue that resonates with the vote. I mean, it's just, they, they're tearing at each other, but there's, not, there's no discussion of anything that's of any substance or import. I think at least that's, what, that's playing yeah. out. I mean, I know well, I think, had debates. I think there's probably some uh, very important decisions that have been made by the uh, strategists here, and that is if you take up the death penalty, there are people who are pro-life, against anti-abortion, who don't like the death penalty as well. There is the Catholic vote, for example, that on official policy is against the death penalty. So uh, there are some, I think, um, groups that they've probably analyzed and said, we don't want to take that path because we need that group and we'll get them okay. on this issue, but not on that issue. Okay. I think what's, what's frustrating about this is the fact that this grace is going to spend maybe $40 million to get the next governor elected, and it's going to be based on negative campaigns because negative campaigning works, and that's what the uh, ad agencies tell you is the way to go. And so when you've got a lot of money to spend, you just fine tune and flood the market with things that before, when you spent only $20 million to get elected, you didn't see as much of. So there's dumping all this negative crap on, on, the, on the electorate, and you, I turn the sound down every time I hear half of these because I just, I know, it's, it's, so, it's so insulting, so, it's so stupid, you know. But I guess many of the electorate uh, are persuaded by it because that's why it's done, and this is all scientifically... Uh, I, I think they're persuaded if the other side doesn't respond. I think at the if, if both sides both sides start responding back and forth, then I think then people are beginning to believe like it's a pox in both their houses, and mm -hmm. then I don't know what they take their cues on. Mm -hmm. I, know, well, the, that's the average it. voter. I, mean, I don't know what they do then to try to figure out, you know, how they're going to vote in this, in this particular race. I mean, Doyle has been swimming uphill for four years because he's had a very very Republican legislature and budget um, he's, problems. He's had he's actually handled. Budget issues yeah. quite brilliantly, I think. I yeah. mean, the, 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 there's been a substantial cut. You laugh, but it's been a balanced budget. And it was, it, the Republicans handed him a tremendous deficit, and, and they've worked their way out of it to some extent. And, you know, there's a little smoke and mirrors going on, but Doyle is. Transportation fund is. Used for a lot of things uh, well, <laughs> in Doyle's budget. And, yeah. yeah. But of course, 
you can't quarrel with that because the smoke, the, the uh, tobacco I'm settlement not, was completely bought out by the Republicans I know and that decimated was, that within was ridiculous, wasn't two or three well, months. Well, no, but who was, uh, who was in the Senate then? That was controlled by the Democrats at that well, point. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah. I mean, it was all pressure and, and put forward by the, by the Republicans. So, so a pox on both their houses as far as that goes. <laughs> I, I don't... Uh, no, the, the Milwaukee Sentinel, I think I told you on the telephone, I talked to you once about something else. They, the last couple of days or er, earlier this week, they had articles on both Jim Doyle and Mark Green side by side. Actually, Doyle was on the on the uh, left of the page, <laughs> and Green was on the right of the front page. Very you go clever down, on the part of the Milwaukee Journal. <laughs> yeah, and you go to read, and then when you go to the inside to get the rest of the story, Doyle's was on the left side, and Green's mm -hmm. was on the right. But they were bios about the individuals growing up, their family, what they did yeah. educationally, and they, they were very human, human. They have some nice qualities about them, and you don't see that in the ads. You think no. Jim Doyle has nice He's qualities? He's got some nice this qualities. This has now been recorded on tape, Tom. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. You're committed. He's committed, but Green has some nicer qualities. <laughs> no. So no, I, I thought, yeah. that, was, you know, I, that was very nice. Yeah. Uh, was, so that I was see a those, good touch by the journal to do that. I yeah, I think that was a very yeah. good touch. So I see these ads, and I just think these are just two people in an arena, yeah. you know, sword fighting, and people yeah. are going to vote. Yeah. I mean, it's such a waste of money, though. <laughs> but you're absolutely it, right. It's I mean, such a waste Cal, of Cal's money. Cal's absolutely right about the amount of money. And so the more money you have, the more weird you, the weird this thing gets. Mm -hmm. I mean, an ad on the part of the Doyle campaign uh, exposing the fact that in one ad, they actually used actors you know, in, in a green <laughs> spot. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> did, did anybody really think that they the actually went to a hockey game and just had a spontaneous conversation with some folks about Wisconsin tuition? I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, what's shocked. next? That the yeah. one where the kids are walking off, you know, because they're leaving Wisconsin? The, these might actually be, you know, kids maybe from someplace other than Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I mean, who, knows? <laughs> who knows? Well, that. that's going to swing my vote. That's going to swing yeah. my vote. Yeah. I, I mean, that's just the that I think that's part of the uh, the real pro real problem is, is you know there's just so much there's there's both candidates are so washed in, in money that you can just throw an ad yeah. and you can respond pretty quickly. The turnaround time on, for example, the immigration charges. Mm -hmm. You know, Jim Jim Doyle evidently is for opening up the floodgates of Wisconsin, which is really significantly close to the you know, <laughs> Mexican border. Um, and and and. Then you've got the response by the Doyle campaign. Well, what are you talking about? We actually sent Wisconsin people, you know, and they got their feet in the Rio Grande, I guess, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. is and is immigration really that big? And I hear again the national campaign is playing out here too. Is immigration really going to touch Wisconsin voters? Is there that much? You know, fervor among mm -hmm. our voters right now about immigration. Well, it's one. Of I the don't think so. It's one of the few issues that the Republicans are even coming close on, though. I mean, yeah. if you look at the approval polls, and you know, are you mm -hmm. in favor of you know building a wall? Are you in favor of? Uh, I mean, immigration is really a, is a, is it's, it's such an interesting issue because, well, getting off topic, but you know, those massive demonstrations in May, in late April and 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 early May this year. Um, from from immigrants, uh, just hundreds of thousands of people, and yet, you know, Congress and I think the nation as a whole is very concerned. I mean, it's a complex, very complex issue. But well, it's also a reaction by Republicans who are now out there in the field running, having come back from Washington without success. They couldn't agree with Bunks themselves, let alone with the White House, on developing any type of policy and putting into law. And they've mm -hmm. been debating this thing for over a year. And so they have to come back and show that they, they, take, they really have a stand on something. And so they're going to move to the right because that, of course, yeah. the Republican well, Party would but probably play better. Our own Congressman uh, Sensenbrenner, our own Wisconsin Congressman, he led the, he led the House charge on... On, on the immigration issue, you know, when we build the wall first, we take you, care of that issue yeah. first, then we deal with the second, how do we, you know, we got to stop the flood, and then yeah. we deal. But he, he was pretty strong. He, let, he held, held ground. He did hold his ground. It was pretty foolish ground, in my opinion. Yeah. But in but, any event, just to, but, in, yeah. just to segue off a little bit, the Sensenbrenner-Kennedy race is interesting to me only because... Brian Kennedy is paying, and this is a Democrat, and it pains me to criticize a Democrat, but he's paying himself to run. And I don't know about you, but 
I got some problems with that. Um, and he's paying well, he himself. may as well because he's going to get his butt whipped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that I district, know, but, I mean, I'm sorry, still, you could but, run a German Shepherd in the Republican <laughs> Party. He's going to be sent to Congress. I know. <laughs> that district is so, re I mean, you couldn't design a more the Republican, Republican district. the congressional district we have. Oh, you know? I know, I know. But I mean, I used to say that kid, when Sheboygan kid. was in it, it was, I used to tell my students, they look at that and they say, that's a really odd looking sort of, and I would break the data down. I say, and so here's this little liberal pimple on the butt of the district. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Sheboygan, you know. I'm just glad to be back in Petri's uh, district yeah. because I think there's at least a reasonable chance that there might be, you know, Tom is certainly a little more uh, modern in his views than, than, than Sensenbrenner is. Couldn't you figure out a way to characterize the campaign funds as other than salary for myself mm -hmm. while I'm running? Yeah. I don't know. It just struck me as being... It's, it's unusual. Yes, it is. It, it, is. it makes you maybe a little unwilling to contribute to the guy's campaign. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Sure. You know, I'm just not really interested sure. in paying your salary. But I'm glad he's running because uh, yeah. Yeah. years past... I mean, he's pretty bright, yeah, actually. Yeah, in, in years past, it's been very difficult to get someone. Even, and and yeah. if they did find somebody, the person was not out there on the debate trail in a very articulate manner. Oh, no. Uh, no. Debates I've seen on television are the excerpts. Uh, Kennedy holds his own. And he, he's does. Yes, he, he does. He does. And he does it very well. Yeah. yeah. So there, there has to be some way to fashion this, you know, as, you know, reimbursement for gas, you know, to, <laughs> to drive around. Or I mean, they're just, you know, with, with that, well, in any event, that was, that was really a side issue. But I, uh, uh, and it didn't go very far because nobody cares. I but. want to get back to the Doyle thing. One yeah. of the things that I think, I'm not sure why, Do I mean, again, one of the things that frustrates voters, at least as people watch this debate, is this Doyle tendency to say, well, you know, Green's from Congress, and so he should be lecturing us about anything because we all know how dysfunctional Congress is. And so when, when, when Green starts talking about the budgetary state of Wisconsin, which I think is a really important issue because Doyle has kicked the can down the road a little bit, and so did the Republican legislature. You know, they were privy to that um, or part of that. You know, his response is, well, you know, Congress can't even get the national government budget in order. Who are they to be talking and lecturing me? I just think that that lack of, I don't think that's going to play out. I don't think that's a poor strategy for Doyle. I think really Doyle should take on the issue of this is what I got. This is what we had to deal with. Yeah, we're going to have future problems down the road, but we made progress. This is what I inherited from my Republican predecessor. But there's this constant reference to, well, you know, Green's from the Congress, and we all know how wretched Congress is. But that goes back to negative campaigning. Yeah. I mean, if Doyle says the things that you just say, yeah. he loses. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Maybe I'm an idealist, but I think a campaign of ideas where you're, where you're honest about the progress that you've made um, is going to resonate at this point after, I think at this point in the campaign, I mean, I know, I know that when we get about three days out, we're all going to see, you know, pictures of the family and everybody yeah, throwing positive. a football. Yeah, everybody's going to throw that. a football. Sure. And we're going to have hazy, gauzy pictures, and there'll mm -hmm. be Anya in the background or something. You know, who knows? <laughs> Abba. We're going to see. No, not Abba. That's too frightening. Anya. You know, you know, or some sort of new age music, you know. Uh, and if it's a Republican, just maybe some Christian hymns, you know, background. Yeah. But flags, at any rate, yeah, at any rate, a lot of flags, you know, <laughs> and lots of little kids and, and all that. We'll see that. But I think right now, if, if people actually made it a campaign about really at least talking about some issues that are important to people in Wisconsin. Yeah. I thought Green was actually on the right track when he started talking about job loss um, and and those kind and maybe uh, maybe the, you know, Wisconsin being a high tax state and those kinds of things. I think, and even the tuition thing is, is from my point of view, as deceptive as it was, I think those things actually are meat and potato issues that people can get their hands mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. uh, heads around. But uh, it's it's you know. been interesting. How about um, Falk and Van Hollen? I haven't heard much. No, I, I think both of them probably don't have the resources to go on television, and as you see with the governor's mm -hmm. race, it's not going to be a $40 million uh, AG's race. So they're going to save all their muster for the last uh, for week the last, and a half yeah. or so. Yeah. And then you're going to see probably some negative ads. And uh, I don't know what Falk's going to dig up on about Van Hollen, but Van Hollen will probably talk about uh, Falk's uh, unique role as a public intervener. And yeah, he's already done that. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, that, I think that's maybe what loss, that's what we'll see. Losses. A tree yeah. hugging. Girl. Well, that, that's WMC <laughs> is running those ads, right? Yeah. Right. And which is irking me because uh, frivolous lawsuits are, are an eye of the beholder, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And, and, but Falk hasn't responded to those uh, 
those res has she? I mean, really, has she really I haven't seen addressed that, it? But I, yeah. I think that probably speaks about her modest budget. Do okay. you blow your whole budget responding to WMC and then all of a sudden have little resources in the last two weeks to defend yourself against Van Holland? Mm -hmm. See, and I, but I know, I think Falk in the last couple of days has been running ads about, you know, Van Holland's support for uh, concealing, carrying concealer, conceal and carry. And I think that's, and, and pointing out the fact that almost every police officer with a functioning brain is saying this is not a good idea from the mm -hmm. point of view of the safety of our officers. Could we just take a moment in this time and talking about carrying concealed and lift our coffee cups to Frank Lassay <laughs> <laughs> and a toast to Frank. Um, he has yeah. made the Colbert yeah. report. <laughs> He doesn't want him concealed. He just wants him to carry him. <laughs> yeah, no if you get a chance to just go online and look at uh, Stephen Colbert's uh, take on, on Frank Lassay, it is it's actually pretty humorous. But if any citizen in Sheboygan has any open idea about, or not quite sure about how they are on the issue, you walk down to Michigan Avenue in a bar at about midnight or one o'clock in the morning, and you walk in there and ask yourself, do you really want some people walk, even with a license, even with the training? Do you really want them walking around with guns? I mean, it's <laughs> I think a much more serious issue is do you really My want goodness. teachers walking around with guns? Oh, no. <laughs> what, kind of, right. what kind of role model is that? Oh, I mean, my goodness teach gracious. Peaceful coexistence <laughs> amongst human beings and teachers walking around with a gun. <laughs> I mean, talk about an empty headed idea. Oh, well, you I, know, did. We, I can't tell you how often in the course of my, my career I have to sit down with students and say, you know, violence isn't the way we solve yeah. problems. Yeah. Viol you know, we don't, we have to work this out somehow, some way. Yeah, yeah, and then you're talking about. And if you don't listen to me, I yeah. got a gun. Just <laughs> 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 open it up. Yeah. Open, yeah. Yeah. Go back here. And there's some of my colleagues. I don't think I want them with. Uh, you wouldn't want me with a firearm. Well, there you minute. go. Yeah, uh, vice versa. That was a, an idea that met its demise real oh. quick. Well, I just, I mean, really, just on a national level now, it, it, <clears throat> it has brought great honor on the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and great publicity, and so I think we can all be very grateful for uh, for Mr. Lasse. Did you serve with him yes, in I the did. legislature? He's been there for a long time. Yes, and, he has. Yep. And, uh, and I won't say too much more. Okay, no. very good. And <laughs> I take it that you and he often were not on the same That's side of a variety of public That's issues. Correct. Let's. Um, yeah, he's a conservative. Okay. <laughs> let's touch briefly on the amendments, which I think will bring a lot of people out. Um, the anti-amendment. Speaking of gay marriage, uh, I'm just going to call it the gay marriage amendment. I'm not sure what amendment it is, really. It's, it's, it's a confusing uh, couple paragraphs, but... Um, it really ought to be displayed as a greater than just the marriage amendment. I mean, I think it, that second sentence is really a kicker, in my opinion, on that question. Uh, yeah, and I don't have it here in front of me, but I have no real idea what it means. Um, and I'm kind of used to reading these things uh, for a living, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty confusing. I always like those kinds of things, you know, full employment acts for lawyers, you know, just get really ambiguous, poorly constructed, uh, poorly worded uh, statutes, uh, amendments that it keeps us in business, and so for that reason, but Fair Wisconsin is the group that has a multi-coalition, multi-group coalition has, I think, really organized up pretty well. Um, yeah. I'm surprised. Um, I, I did not, and it's it's kind of reverberated on just on a, a bunch of different different levels that I don't think the um, the people who asked to have it on the ballot necessarily contemplated. I think it passes in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. I, polls say that. Um, I think it'll be closer because of the work of the fair committee. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very angered by the fact that it's there for simple reasons. I think it's there for political reasons. One, to get out the conservative vote. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think it was concocted by the extreme right-wing nuts who put in that second sentence, who preclude any type of uh, ability of people to contract through civil unions and, and so on to, mm -hmm. to live together, whether they're married, whether they're same sex or heterosexual. Um, those, I think, are personal decisions. I think the right to contract is a personal decision. But there are people who have, are hell-bent on dictating uh, how people live their personal lives. And I think it's, it's, it's stepped over the line. And that second sentence, I think honestly, people can debate whether the applicability of the word marriage and, and uh, honestly disagree. But I think that second, second, second sentence, when you get into unions and contracts, that was something that's completely punitive. And I think the legislature, when they were delivered that language by the real conservatives, just bought it and said, don't worry about it. 
But what Fair Wisconsin and other folks are bringing up is that in other states where that similar language has been put in has led to a lot of litigation as to what type of contracts can be entered into and whether what's illegal and benefits and those type of things. Mm -hmm. Something we don't really need. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, it is, I think it's primarily to turn out the, 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 the voter base. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a little cynical, uh, to put right. it mildly, to, to, uh, to bring those forward. But if they, um, they would stayed just with marriage, it would have at least put in the Constitution what's in the statute. Mm -hmm. You can't have gay marriage in the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. But when you add that second sentence, it opens up into a whole area that's becoming, I think, very restrictive and punitive to people. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> some people have said that, um, that gay marriage and, and equal rights for gays is the sort of the last civil rights movement. And when you think about, I spent some time this summer, I think I mentioned on a pre previous show, <clears throat> reading about women's suffrage and just what an in incredibly long period of time it took, mm -hmm. more than 75 years from start to finish for women just to get the vote, uh, which seems now, looking back on it, you know, pretty self-evident, but so it is going to take a long time. How about the death penalty? I think that comes a little more emotional coming from or having more support, um, but nobody's talking about it much. Mm -hmm. I mean, the gay, the gay marriage mm -hmm. amendment, uh, you know, you're hearing about it, and, but the, the death penalty thing is just kind of not, not and, and it has this, what would seem to be a built-in safety net that it would be only if there was positive DNA evidence and, and so forth. But Plus it's not binding. It's not a constitutional amendment. Right. So I think yeah. resources are not being put into it. Yeah. That's an excellent point yeah. actually. So, um, but I think people are pretty, you know, horrified about the Hallbach case and, sure. and understandably so. And uh, so, uh, so. Well, I, uh, I mentioned before we were, when we were off the air, I think uh, there was a debate in Milwaukee that E. Michael McCann, their district attorney, uh, took the opposing viewpoint, and he basically said our justice system is so flawed, it's racially biased, it's biased against poor people, and the justice system make mis makes mistakes, and therefore us as a state re-entering the arena of the death penalty, which we uh, outlawed, what, in 1853, um, it's just not a road that we ought to go down, but uh, I wish more of this type of debate would occur, because I think once it does pass, it will be used as fodder for those who want to reinstitute it in a mm -hmm. constitutional manner or a mm -hmm. statutory manner. Mm -hmm. I think there should be some significant discussion about the costs, unless you mm -hmm. really are willing to completely take away appeal procedures and so forth. Yeah. I mean, the estimate for a well-thought capital appeal is a million dollars. Sure. And certainly in the course of a lifetime, you'll spend that on, on housing a prisoner and so forth. But uh, um, I, I just think the costs, just from a practical standpoint, but I think McCann's, uh, uh, he's a great guy. Uh, yes, and uh, just his, his points, you know, taken there um, uh, are, are interesting. Uh, just in the, our last few seconds, do both amendments pass? Give me any so. numbers. I think so. I think so. I think both in Sheboygan County and in the state. In the state. Okay. Overwhelmingly yeah. close? No. The gay marriage, I, be, yeah. I bet it's going to be close. I think it'll be closer than the death penalty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I so. had a ballpark it, I'd say 55-45 for the gay amendment and 60-40 in the death penalty, something like that. Wow. Okay. How well, about, how we're, about the governor? Who's going to win governor? I'm in for Doyle. Doyle. Green. Doyle. All right. On that happy note, yeah. <laughs> next time we'll know just how sage and prescient we were. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs>